Today we're going to talk about Makiwara possibilities uh, for alternatives to the traditional straw Makiwara as seen here. Uh, these are no longer available in the United States due to agricultural uh, restrictions, so they cannot be imported. So uh, generally the most uh, obvious alternative these days is the plastic versions. Um, they tend to be uh, kind of expensive and uh, very heavy to ship and therefore expensive to ship, particularly in the COVID days here. Um, check uh, your ch shipping before you order something because uh, the prices have gone up pretty dramatically. So uh, to help people get uh, some alternatives to traditional makiwara, uh, I'm going to demonstrate a couple of versions today that uh, we have used in the past and that have worked well. Uh, one is a uh, Western style uh, foam block uh, used for archery practice for Western archers. Um, it withstands a lot of shooting and uh, roughly the same uh, face size of a makiwara and um, can replace it. it it's not as de deep, um, so we've modified our stands, uh, adding another uh, vertical upright here to um, capture the, the short length of it. Um, it. It's still fairly stable and um, can be adjusted for height as uh, otherwise. And then here's another version that we used or have used in the past. Um, rolled cardboard, which I'll demonstrate how to make one for yourself. It looks similar to a traditional one and uh, takes a fair amount of uh, abuse in terms of shooting. And um, it's also recyclable at the end. So uh, it has some nice attributes and it's very inexpensive and fairly inexpensive, at least in the United States, to uh, ship. So uh, I will give you the specifications on that in a moment. Um, this is the stand that we prefer to use. Um, it seems to work very well, very stable, and uh, collapses flat, so it's very easy to store and very mobile. So um, adjustable legs, by splaying the legs, you open the, the upper portion and uh, can move the makiwara up and down as you need. Um, so these are options we're going to show you today. So we'll now build a cardboard makiwara. Here is a form of uh, cardboard, single-faced, uh, corrugated, and it's designed to roll fairly tightly. It's a uh, B flute um, by this particular company, Uline, and it is, uh, comes in a 250-foot roll and um, is 24 inches tall. So today we're going to unroll it and roll it very tightly and then uh, tie it off so that it would function like a, a, a traditional makiwara. So here we'll begin rolling and the object is to just roll as tight as possible, it, it, particularly at the very beginning uh, where the center tends to be a little bit looser. So we want to uh, have the, the uh, center portion of the Makiwara be very tightly rolled. And just we're just doing this by finger um, and squeezing as we, as we roll. Now this is an idea that was introduced to me first in 1994 at the uh, first Georgia National Seminar, um, which I believe was the second uh, American National Seminar um, here in the United States. Um, a woman practicing there in Georgia, uh, Cynthia Cato Shannon, um, had one of these at her home. So uh, to my knowledge, she's the uh, originator of the idea. Um, she used it as a home uh, training makiwar and actually had it suspended uh, from her ceiling. Uh, so she didn't actually need a stand for it at all. She had it positioned in a, a very wonderful space in her home so she could actually shoot uh, without interfering with anything else and uh, had this great makiwara space. Okay. So again, I'm just trying to uh, 
roll this as tight as I can. Uh, probably two people would be better um, just to get it even tighter as you, as you move. But the uh, whole idea is just to uh, squeeze it as tight as you can as you roll it up. The, the original roll is very loosely rolled, so uh, this should compress some, and uh, as it grows, it'll get tighter. So I'm just, again, pulling it as tight as I can. Uh, there will be a tendency for it to unroll slightly, so try not to lose your grip on it as you roll. And uh, there'll be some mechanical compaction that will happen later, but uh, you really don't want to rely on that completely and try to, uh, again, roll tight as you can. Also, it's important that you try to keep the ends fairly square and don't uh, begin to shape them too much one way to the other. So this sort of takes the same um, traditional shape of, of a regular traditional makiwara and in some ways is a nice replacement for it that way, uh, inexpensive at least. Um, it also has the advantage of being recyclable, so when you finish uh, shooting it, when you've shot it up basically, uh, you can just recycle it, which is a very nice plus. Um, they will not last as long as, obviously, as a traditional makiwara, nor uh, the plastic ones. I imagine that the plastic ones are, are much long, longer lived in terms of uh, number of shots, but I think this will live a, a good long time for most practitioners, and certainly for a home situation uh, would be appropriate. Keeping an eye on the ends. As it goes along, it's easier to, to roll tight. You can see it's fairly, uh, fairly tight there at the core. So as you progress with your rolling, you'll find that uh, there's a tendency for the end sometimes to move uh, away from the face of the, uh, the roll that you're creating. So it's important to, uh, to try to keep things flat on, on, the, on the end faces so it's fairly uniform. So to do that, um, we actually will uh, tip it up, in this case on our table, and you can just tap it down square again. And try not to lose your, your turn, your, uh, your twist, uh, as you, uh, your, your tightness basically as you continue. So try to maintain that as you move things up and down. As we've got to the end here, we've folded back the very last bit of it. Uh, we actually trimmed off a little portions that were a little bit rough in terms of uh, being ragged. Trimmed those off, bent it underneath, and temporarily just put a couple pieces of tape on it so we didn't lose our twist. I've now added a lumber um, winch to the, uh, around the roll, and I'm going to now uh, pull it tight and uh, put some pressure on it, the roll. I'm doing this away from the top edge, thinking that that might be my uh, finished edge at the top of the makiwara and want my uh, winch out of the way of tying. I'm setting it back a couple inches from the face, and I'm just putting some pressure on it. As you can see, it's already compressing the, uh, the cardboard even more. Okay, so at this point, you've tightened, compressed the uh, roll, and you now need to secure it. Um, you could just use uh, baling wire, um, wrap around, bring to the top, cross, and twist, and tighten to uh, squeeze even more. 
Um, that could be uh, wrapped in decorative rope if you want. Um, you could also go directly to rope and uh, sec secure it with that. Um, I just have two loops here running through at the end of a, a loop. Uh, perhaps Maria Sensei could uh, tell us exactly what the appropriate knot is for here, but uh, I'm just going to secure this as best I can, tighten it up, and tie it off. And once you've secured one uh, set of ropes here, you can then move along the back uh, five, six times. I think traditionally I've seen at least five um, to secure it all the way along the length. I'm just using a square knot here on the top. And uh, can tie off several knots uh, on the top just to uh, make it a little more decorative and a little more secure. So again, move your compressor back along and continue tying as much as you'd like. Um, as this is used over time, it will loosen up and you can uh, re-secure it by um, constricting more and make, taking up some of the portions that have been shot out uh, by just tightening it uh, as you go along. So it can prolong the age of it uh, that way. So, but here's basically a, a makiwara, uh, fairly inexpensive and uh, fairly long lived. So, good luck with that. Okay, so I'd now like to demonstrate how to build a makiwara stand. This is a particularly stable version and folds very flat, very good for storage, and uh, holds up well. So first, uh, there'll be a specific specification sheet there with all the measurements on it, and uh, you can refer to that for actual dimensions of things. Uh, first, we're going to start off with the three excuse me, four uprights, and we're going to round off the ends of uh, them on the same face. So I found a small piece of plastic that is the exact width of, of my uh, uprights here. So I just place that on the end and use that to trace a rounded shape. Um, I do it to all, f all four on this end and the same on the same face on the other end as well. Um, for the sake of demonstration, I'm not going to bother, but normally you, we just trim these rounded and sand them and smooth them. Um, and it makes a better connection uh, on the floor and stabilizes uh, things and also tends not to let uh, the makabara stand bang into things as much if, uh, if the corners are rounded. So anyway, uh, we'll now jump ahead from that to, um, we're now going to measure so I measure up 40 inches, or the uh, metric equivalent. They want to be even from the, the, most importantly from the base, the bottom, so it keeps the stand stable. Then I just come across and mark the center.
Okay, so you can start your hole with a little awl just to make sure everything is very centered. You want these holes to line up very uh, well. So after centering, we then try to drill. We're going to go down about uh, halfway through. And try to keep it straight. So um, we've drilled our holes and we now have these pins, half inch, 13 millimeter, uh, that fit into our holes, one in each pair. Then we mate them up. And at this point, the bottoms should align and the two sides roughly align. So this acts as a pivot. We now need to lay our uh, two pairs side by side like this, one to the inside, one to the outside, and take the wider of the, the vertical, uh, excuse me, horizontals, marking at 36 and three inches. We come up three and up 36 and put the, the uh, we'll put the top of the 36 here and make it flush with the, uh, the front face of the, uh, the stand here. I'm just gonna square it up. So flush with the front face. Once we have our horizontal pieces on, we need to cut a diagonal. So we measure first, cross the diagonal, and make sure we have the same measurement top uh, from one side to the diagonally across. And once they're the same measurement from these corners, from these corners and these corners are the same, then you can set this on in place, mark it, and cut it like we have already here. And then uh, add that to the outer the outer vertical. This gives the uh, stand stability. Uh, you could do without it if need be, but uh, it does stab stabilize things better. So we'll now flip over and do the same on the other face. For adjusting the height of the stand for the maculoir, you can um, just put a screw and a chain from the center of this cross piece to the center of this piece. This can have a hook on it and you can just adjust it on the chain links. Um, if there's particular settings you wanna save, you can put a hook on that one itself and uh, mark it as the one that you use the most often. But uh, anyway, th that's a way of uh, adjusting the width. It spreads the legs and closes up the top at the same time so that you can move the maki wire up and down as you need.